نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اوصيكم جميعا واياي بتقوى الله جل وعلا Brothers and sisters, I advise you all, as well as myself, first and foremost, with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي صَحْرِ مُسْلِمْ عَنْ أُمْ حِشَامْ بِنْتْ حَارِثَ إِبْنْ نُعْمَانْ رَدِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهَا And indeed, it comes in the Sahih Muslim from a tremendous hadith on the authority of Umm Hisham, the daughter of Haritha. إِبْنْ نَا إِبْنْ نُعْمَانْ قَالَتْ شِنْ سَاسْ ما حفظت قاف الا من في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يخطب بها كل الجمعه she says that i have not memorized قاف except from the mouth of the messenger of allah صلى الله عليه وسلم because he would give the khutbah he would recite it every friday with it he would recite it every friday and another narration it mentioned that he would do this for two years or half a year. Recite the same exact khutbah, the same exact surah. The same exact surah, which is surah tuqaf, which is surah fiti in the Quran. He will recite the same exact surah for a year and a half. She continued. She says, وَكَانَ تَنُّورُنَا وَتَنُّورُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَاحِدًا and she said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam She said that our oven and the oven of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were one and the same That our oven and the oven of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was one and the same Allah Jalla wa Ala Yaqulu fi kitab al-Aziz Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala He says in his mighty book Na'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim Qaf Wal-Qur'an Al-Majid Isma'u Jayyidan Isma'u Ya Ayyuh Al-Iqwa Aqwa Jayyidan Allahu Jalla wa Ala Maratin Ukhra Qaf Wal-Qur'an Al-Majid Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala He says Qaf and unfortunately, during the time the Prophet وسلم, when reciting this verse, he was talking to people who understood the Luga. They understood the Arabic language. They also had understood the potency of the ayat itself. Each verse, it actually touched every fiber of their being. So when they heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, recite the Surah, it strike them. It what? It knight them. Their Iman was actually raised. And I'm hoping by the permission of Allah Jalla wa Ala that we can touch some of that by listening to this surah. Because unfortunately enough, the Qur'an is abandoned in our time. We do not read the Qur'an with tadabbur. A lot of us read the Qur'an with haliyan. We read the Qur'an according to how we feel it, according to our circumstance, according to the condition that we might be in. If I'm feeling this way, then I'll pick up the book. If I want to learn about marriage or anything like that, then I'll pick up the book. If I'm entertaining this thought or that thought, then I'll pick up the book. But you're talking about a group of people who the book was their lifeline. A group of people who read the book from front to back, front to back, we're talking about. And narrations that they finished the Quran five times, 10 times, 15 times. We're talking about in one month. We can't finish the Qur'an in one month. It becomes a burden. So we ask Allah Jalla wa to allow us to hear, really hear, 
the statement of Allah. Allah says, cough, something that is very unique here. Allah Jalla wa'ala, He sent down the Qur'an in Arabic language. And even though He sent it down in the Arabic language, and even though the Prophet ﷺ was an Arab, and he was talking to people who understood, meaning the Arabs, who understood the Arabic language, Allah still says Qaf, using the letter from the Arabic alphabet. And they still didn't know the meaning. Allah Jalla wa'ala, He says Qaf, wal Qur'an al majid Wal Qur'an al majid Huh? By the glorious Qur'an. By the glorious Qur'an. And indeed it's a glorious Qur'an. We ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to allow us to benefit from the book of Allah. Continuing. Allah says, بَلْ عَجِبُوا أَن أَيْذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجْرٌ بَعِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Nay, they wondered that there has come to them a warner, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from amongst themselves. So the disbelievers, they say, this is a strange thing. And by way of our actions in this time, we are saying similar. You might say, what do I mean? The Muslims, the actions of the Muslims in our time, we are saying similar with the Kufar said in their time that this is a strange thing. How we're saying is by way of our actions, that we believe that the Quran is ajeeb, that it doesn't hold the solution for all of your problems in this time, that the Quran doesn't address the issues in this time. That the Qur'an doesn't guide you in this time. We're acting as if it's ajeeb. And they continue. Allah Jalla wa Ala says the reason why they consider it to be strange, because this was a book that was telling them that the dead will be resurrected. So he says, أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابَ What? When we are dead and have become dust, we will be resurrected. ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيد That is far off. So this is considered to be strange to them. This concept of resurrection, Allah Jalla wa Ala informs them. قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُ وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds them, just as we should be reminded. And we know that which the earth takes of each of them, meaning their dead bodies. And with us is a book, and with us is in a book which is preserved. Kitab al Hafib, the book of decrees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bal kaddabu bil haqqi lamma ja'akum fa'um fi amrim marid. Nay, but they have denied the haqq when it comes to them. Meaning they denied the Quran when it has come to them. So they are in a confused state. They cannot differentiate between what is right or wrong. How many of us do to our actions? How many of us do to our actions? We used to deem something to be impermissible. Now we deem that thing to be permissible. And vice versa. Huh? The Salaf, they used to say that this is a sign that what? Of not a good. This is not a good sign. This is a bad sign. When that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to allow you to see that which was good, you were considered to be good. But now you see that which is good to be bad and that which is bad to be good is a problem. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us strong. So, in here, brothers and sisters, we can see just in these first five verses that not only the disbelievers, the kufar, they considered the message from, from the Prophet sallallahu which was the Quran and the Sunnah to be strange, that they doubted the resurrection, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that rarely what they have done, they have doubted the truth. They denied it with this Qur'an when it has come to them. So they are in a confused state. So Allah says in his next group of verses, and I want you to pay attention, he used what is called Dalilul Aqal. This is called rational proof. Allah Jalla wa Ali, he calls on the fact that he has given each of them faculties. And what are your faculties supposed to be utilized for? We take it for granted. You can hear, you can see, 
You can smell. You can taste. You can talk. These faculties that Allah has given each and every one of us, we have somehow taken for granted. How do you take it for granted? When you utilize them for a purpose other than what they were created for. When you utilize them for other than the purpose of what they're created for, you're taking it for granted. Allah has many verses in the Quran where he tells us about the fact that he has given us eyes, ears, and a heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ وَالْأَرْضَ مَدَّنَاهَا وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيجٍ تَبْقِرَةً وَذِكْرَى لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ مُنِيبٍ Allah says in these next verses, utilizing the faculties which He's given us to show us a proof, to show the proof to the kuffar that this is not a strange thing, and that the resurrection is not far off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them to want what? Do they not? Have they not looked at the heavens above them? Have they not looked at the heavens above them and how we have made it, how we have constructed it? كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا And how we have adorned it. وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجٍ And there is no rift within between the heavens and the earth. There is not one mistake. There is not one mistake in the heavens and the earth. And no one on the face of this earth will deny the fact that they don't have one hand in creating the heavens and the earth. There's no one, who far however, non-believer, believer, no one will come and say that they created the heavens or the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, do they not ponder, reflect, look at the skies above them? The lower heaven, how we have adorned it. How we have made it a canopy that covers us. Huh? Do they not look at that? How do we come outside of our homes and we don't take a time to look at that? And we think that life is just what we're going through. We live in like a little bubble. Whatever you got going on in your life right now, that's, that's not the biggest thing. When you come out and you wake up, you should be reflective. Abdullah ibn Rasuri said that the believer is reflective. And he didn't get this from himself. He got it from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He reflect. Look at life. Stop taking things for granted. That sky up there, it should call you to praise Allah Huh? Do you not look at the heavens? But it's a bigger, deeper meaning. Meaning that the same one who created that heaven and made this beautiful heaven and made this perfect earth with no rifts, anything in between, that's the same one that created your life. And then he continues. Allah says, in the earth, we have spread it out. We have spread it out for you and have set the own mountain standing firm. None of us have produced the mountains. None of us have created the earth. But we find ourselves when we're born, we come into this world. And man have the audacity when he do get a little bit of strength to contest or contend with Allah. When did you become stronger than Allah? And you might say, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not fair on. I'm not contesting with Allah. But you do that whenever time you disobey Allah. What do you think my Ma'asi is? When you disobey Allah, when I disobey Allah, we contend with Allah. If Allah commands us to do something and we go against that command, we're contending with Allah. <coughs> but if we go a step further and make that which Allah has made impermissible, permissible, now we are definitely stepping in the realm of Allah's who will be in. Now we are contending and contesting with Allah on His Lordship. When we say that, no, that's not halal, that's not haram, that's halal. But Allah said it was haram. No, it's halal. Birthdays are halal. Why? Why are birthdays are halal? It's haram. But when you come alone and celebrate your birthday, what are you doing? I guess Allah got it wrong, right? When you celebrate any of these holidays, which Allah has not sanctioned, I guess Allah got it wrong, right? You're contesting and contending with it. When you do all these different things, you're telling that Allah got it wrong and you got it right. You're the one that should be legislating this and not that Allah should be doing it. 
We don't think that deep about it. We don't really ponder that deep on it. But it's really that's what you're doing. We ask Allah subhanahu to make us better slaves. And Allah continued. And he says, and have produced there in every kind of lovely growth plants. We don't play no part in the plants that's outside. The vegetation. The many different things that Allah subhanahu wa place on this earth. And then look what he says. The one who's really going to take the, 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 the insight from this, who's really going to reflect on this, is a certain type of servant. Allah said, Tabasira Tawwa Zikra li kuli ain't Abidin Munib. We ask Allah to make us what? Of those who are Abidun Munibun. Those who constantly return back to Allah. And an insight and reminder for every slave turned into Allah. The one who believes in Allah perform good deeds, perform deeds of his obedience, and always beg for his forgiveness. That's a Abdun Munib. Are you a Abdun Munib? Brothers and sisters, are you one who constantly return back to Allah? For every mistake that you made, whether knowingly or unknowingly, do you return back to Allah? Or are you that arrogant that it doesn't affect you? That if you commit a sin, you wipe it away like it's a fly. As Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, this is what? This is the, the hypocrite. He looks at the sins or the disobedience to Allah, it's like it was a fly annoying him. Whereas the believer, he looks as if a mountain is getting ready to fall on him. It's getting ready to crush him when he commits a sin, when she commits a sin. You can see the contrast. We always look at the stories of the Sahabas. And we make it seem like it's a fairy tale. How were they able to do those actions? How was they able to carry out and spread Islam? You know why? Because they believe. You say, what do I believe? Really? It was here. They believe. So when Allah told them to go forth and fight, it wasn't no question. When Allah said, does this or does that, it wasn't no question. We say we believe, but our actions say something else. Fasting come up, we got a million and one excuses. Aki, my back hurt, so I ain't fasting that. Aki, I ain't feeling good. You know, I got a headache. I ain't gonna fast today. that. Look, just look at all the excuses you make. Oh, why didn't you pray? Oh, I didn't pray because, you know, I, I just wasn't, I'm, I'm just not in the, in the mood for it right now. Can you imagine a companion saying this? I got leg problems, so I'm not going to pray. Allah's name. Then Allah continues in the next couple of verses to bring to highlight the point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَزَّوْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً مُبَارَكًا فَأَنبَتْنَا بِهِ فَأَنبَتْنَا بِهِ جَنَّاتٍ وَحَبَّ الْحَقِيدِ وَالنَّخْلَ بَاسِطَاتٍ لَهَا طَلْعٌ نَضِيدٌ رِزْقًا لِلْعِبَادِ رِزْقًا لِلْعِبَادِ وَأَحْيَيْنَا بِهِ بَلْدَةً مَيْتًا كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوجِ الله أكبر. I want y'all to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the story. So the Kufar in the beginning of this story, they said that this was a strange thing. And they denied the resurrection. But look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clear all of that up. He says, we have sent down blessed water. Water that is blessed. And this is why the scholars, they explain that what? Rain. The water that comes down is permissible. It's permissible to drink. It's permissible to what? To make tahara from. It's blessed water that Allah sent down. We did not cause that water to come down. Every, no one would deny it. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what happened with this rain coming from the sky? With it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produced gardens and grains of every kind of harvest that are reaped so that we can eat. Not just you, animals, so that we can eat. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and tall date palms with range clusters and a provision for Allah's servants. One of my favorite, favorite part of the verse. A risk. Allah's al razzaq Every animal on the face of this earth is being provided for without your help or assistance. And Allah doesn't ask it. But yet and still, you will sit there and deny the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. And you say, no, I'm not denying that. Yes, you do. When you go and do the haram. When you give up in despair. <coughs> When it feels like your financial situation is not changing. 
when you don't put your tawaku in Allah. This is what you're saying. Allah is al razak What does that mean? He provides for you. He provides for you down to the fact that you breathe. Ibn Qayyim al Jazia, he says that the breath, there is a time period, which is about a second or two, in between each breath that you and I take, that that is death. That one second, that two second is death. If it cuts off, you're dead. But who allows you to keep taking that breath? It's none other than Allah subhanahu But it's the Muslims, the one who has the Quran. If the Muslims, the one who has the Sunnah, if the Muslims don't believe in it, if the Muslims don't act according to it, then how can we sit there and warn the, warn the people who are what? Non-believers. How can we be example for them? When we don't believe in it. When it's not moving us. It should not be a calf on the face of this earth that is better than you. I mean this. If you're walking around believing that a calf is better than a believer, something is wrong. Allah Jalla says, He said about the believers, they are the best of creations. He said about the non believers, They are the worst of the creation. But yet, still, when a kufar die, an entertainer, a celebrity, all of us are spreading around on social media. We're feeling that death more than we're feeling anything else. What about your iman? What about your ta'ah? What about your obedience to Allah? And I'm talking to myself. We feel the death of a non-believer more than we feel what? Our iman deteriorating. We ask Allah subhanahu to make us better servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, al ibad. But look what he says. He says, Wa bihi belta Each year, brothers and sisters, we see it with our own eyes. A dead earth, a dead man. And Allah revives that man. He brings it back to life. So if you're going to deny the resurrection of all dead bodies, Allah is saying to the kufar, you see Allah is causing resurrection right in front of your face. How much more easier would it be for Allah to bring forth? That's why he says, Kadali kal quruj. Likewise would be your resurrection. It's your resurrection. There was no need for you to deny it. Then Allah tells us that we're not alone, consoling the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the kufar amongst his people are saying nothing but what the kufar all said. Allah says, كَذَّبَتْ قَبَلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَالثَّمُودِ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَمُودِ وَعَادُ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوطُ وَأَصْحَابُ الْعَيْكَةِ وَقَوْمُ تُبَّعْ كُلٌّ كَذَّبَ الرُّسَلَ فَحَقَّ وَعِيدِ أَفَعِيْنَا بِخَلْكِ الْأَوَّلِ بَلْ هُمْ فِي لَبْسٍ مِنْ خَلْكٍ جَدِيدٍ Allah Jalla wa Ala He says and before them, deny what? The people of Nuh, and the dwellers of, Ar dwellers of Ras, and Thamud, and Ad, and Fir'aun, and the brethren of Lut, and the dwellers of the wood, and the people of Tuba. Every one of them denied their messenger. So my threat took effect. All you got to do is stop and say, do you see any remnants of those people? They don't exist. What happened? What was the result? Allah subhanahu wa says, were we then tired with the first creation? Nay. They are in a confused doubt about a new creation, meaning about resurrecting. You still die denying the resurrection. <coughs> and look what we did with these communities, these generations, these nations. We destroyed them. Then the law told the purpose on man. And these next group of verses, brothers and sisters, we ask the law to allow them to touch you. Because these are some scary verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now going to address man. And he's going to address man by letting man know how intimate his knowledge is of him. Allah Jalla wa he says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسُّ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبَلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ وَجَاءَتْ سَقْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ وَجَاءَتْ 
سكرة الموت بالحق ذلك ما كنت من تحيد ونفق في الصور ذلك يوم الوعيد وجاءت كل نفس معها سائك وشهيد سبحان الله عظيم Allah Jalla wa Ali, he says, indeed we created man. And indeed we created man, and we know what his own self whispered to him. The person on your right, the person on your left, don't know what you whisper to yourself, but Allah does. The female that you're trying to impress, don't know what you're whispering to yourself, but Allah does. Huh? The things that you do in life, the stuff that you harbor with inside yourself, Allah knows it. He knows it. The stuff you think people don't see, they're not privy to. Allah knows it. This is why the concept that you feel alone, that you are aloof, is a punishment for those who what? Don't have Iman. But for the believer, he or she never feel alone. Because they know the heart. They are never alone. There's no such thing that a believer will ever feel alone because Allah never left us alone. Never. But as a punishment for the kufar, and as a punishment for the munafikun, the hypocrites, they feel alone. They feel abandoned. Allah Jalla wa Allah doesn't abandon the believers. It's not possible. But if our iman is weak, we don't see this. If our iman is low, we don't feel this. So Allah Jalla wa Allah is telling us of his intimate knowledge. He knows man, and he's closer to man than his juggler vein. No one is more closer to you than Allah is the Wajah. Allah continues. And He says, Remember that you have two receivers, recording angels. Receive each human being after he or she has attained the age of puberty. So when you reach the age of puberty of Baluk, there is one angel sitting on your right and one angel sitting on your left. We're not talking about the gender that's assigned to each and every one of us. We're talking about the two angels that record. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned each and every one of us angels. مَا يَلْفِذُكُمْ There is not a word that you and I, that he, or, that he or she utters, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these recorders, these angels recording what is being said. So when you think it's minute, brothers and sisters, that everything that you're doing, whether good or bad, know that it's being recorded. Allah already sees it. He already hears it. He already knows it. And here's the kicker. He allowed it. You can't do nothing on this earth except by his permission. He allows it. But then he also put angels to record. And you might say, why would Allah need someone to record when Allah subhanahu wa sees it itself? This is thorough. Allah is very thorough. You and I would not have an excuse in front of Allah. So the angels, they record. But then the Prophet وسلم, he tells us an authenticated hadith that the time period that the angels write down the deeds of the, uh, Bani Adam is not on the same time that we are. So that time period is not the same. So within that time period that you have, those six hours, whatever like that, that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, they can, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you. You don't know when the actual time is there, which is another mercy from Allah. Then Allah said, and the stupor of death will come in truth. We live in a time right now where death is really not something that fades a lot of these young individuals. They're killing each other like it's nothing. Here Allah is using the word death as a means to terrify you. And it should. Because the implication of death, brothers and sisters, is that it's a door, it's a bath. It leads to something. It's no such thing of total annihilation. You're not going to die and not feel nothing. That doesn't exist. So for the kufar, who've been saying in their philosophy books, for many, many times the philosophers is arguing that you feel nothing when you, don't, when you die. There's no proof there is anything after it. No. You better not believe that. I don't care who you are. You better not believe that. Don't believe that when you die, it's just going to go totally silent. Allah says, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ بِالْحَقِّ بِالْ... I mean, جَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ When the stupor of death, when death actually comes, when the angel of death comes to expel, this is supposed to alert you, terrify you, 
move you and steal it. But the youth are killing each other like it's nothing. I die, so what? He dies, so what? She dies, so what? But let me tell you something. Allah says, this is what you have been avoiding. You've been avoiding this accountability. Huh? And when the trumpet is blown, that will be the day that you have been promised. When each soul on that day will come with an angel to draw them and another angel to bear witness. And it will be said to them, to the sinners, Yeah, before when you was in the dunya, you were heathens of all of this. You was oblivious to this. Allah Jalla He says, and we should remove this covering, this veil that you have that didn't allow you to see the truth. But you will see it that day. That day you're going to see it with a sharp sight. Then Allah continues. وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ أَلْكِيَا فِي جَهَنَّمَ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ عَنِيدٌ مَنْ نَاعٍ لِلْخَيْرِ مُعْتَدٍ مُرِيبٌ الَّذِي جَعْلَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاغًا آخَرٌ فَأَلْكِيَاهُ فِي الْعَذَابِ الشَّدِيدِ قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا تَغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدِ قَالَ لَا تَخْتَصِمُوا لَدَيَّ وَقَدْ قَدَّمْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ بِالْوَعِيدِ ما يبدل القول لدي وما أنا بظلام للعبيد. الله سبحانه وتعالى he says. Then the angel, his companion, he would say here his record is ready. This is the scary part, because depending on how you receive your record is going to determine your fate. If you receive your record in your right hand, you're good. If you see your hand, your record in behind you, in your left hand, or even behind you, it's not good. So Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says that the angel is going to say, "Here is record with me." It's going to be said to the angels, "Throw both of you, throw in the hellfire every disbeliever." Stubborn disbeliever, hinderer of good, a transgressor, a doubter, who set up another ilah with Allah, meaning he has another deity that he worships besides Allah, then both of you cast him in a severe torment. Stop thinking the hellfire is just something to be said and it's cool to scare people with. That's not true. And this is why, again, I keep going back to the fact of death. Death is real. We know it's real. But a lot of, unfortunately, in this time, the youth don't understand the implications of it. Yeah, they know you off the board, the person doesn't come back to life, yeah. But they don't know what's waiting for them. So they take it like it's, it's, it's nothing. But it's something. And the part, of, the, the part that's really scary is that the day that you and I get to the point that we are not afraid of things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us afraid of, that's the scary part. If you die and don't have Iman here, because you can die before you die a physical death. You can literally die. People are walking around dead right now, spiritually dead. People are walking around mentally dead. People are walking around impoverished. They are morally bankrupt. Ibn al-Qayyim, he says that what? Actually, it was Ibn Taymiyyah. He said that if a person wants to know how he will fear after, how he will be in the grave, or how it will be, let him look at his life in this life. If he have good in the light and he did good and he put forth good in this light, then that's for what? That will be his good sign of how his life will be in the grave. But if many of us are dead in this life, what you think is going to happen? All of a sudden, Allah Jalla wa Ala is going to give you good while you're sitting there waiting for resurrection? No, it's not going to happen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us on that day. I mean. But then Allah Jalla wa Ala, he says, his companion, the shaitan, his kareem, because each, each, one, each one of us have a double. 
Our Lord, I, I did not push him. You can't blame Shaitan. Allah is going to cut off all excuse. You can't say the devil made you do it. It was evil <laughs> insinuations. I did not push him to transgress. But he was himself in error and far astray. Allah Jalla Wala will say, dispute not in front of me. Don't argue in front of me. I have already in advance sent you the threat. The sentence that comes from me cannot be changed. I'm going to say that one more time before ending this first half. The sentence that comes from me cannot be changed. Allah is not changing that sentence. If you and I are marked for the hellfire, we're marked for the hellfire. If we are marked for heaven, we are marked for heaven. Allah says, وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدٍ And Allah Jalla wa'ala is not, never unjust in the least towards the slave. وَقُولِ كُلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَقْلَ لِلْمُسْلِمَةِ الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قيمة لمن يتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين So we see in the first half the excuse will be cut off The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم took 18 months to recite the same story over and over every Friday and if you're not able to just see just what we went over in the verses that we were able to cover, to see the potency of this sword. 18 months, the same exact sword. That Um Hisham, she said, I memorized it from the mouth of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because he recited that much. And the scholars from amongst the Mufassirun, they explained to us, why would the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do that? Why did he select this sword to do that? In the beginning of the surah, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, Kaf wal Quran al -Majid. I want you to pay attention to that. By the glorious Quran. And when we get to the end of the surah, I want you to see the connection between the two. Why would the Prophet Sallallahu recite the surah for 18 months? Pay attention to these next couple of verses. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, Yawma naqoolu li jahannam Yawma naqoolu li jahannam يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلْ امْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ حَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ أُدْخُلُوهَا بِسَلَامٍ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُلُودِ لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا we ask Allah Jalla wa Ala to pardon us, to have mercy on us. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, on the day that we were asked to help her, <laughs> on the day that we were asked to help her, Allah has informed us in His verse, brothers and sisters, that the hellfire is a living creature. Allah is telling us that the hellfire is a living creature. That it is alive and that it is aware. And that Allah used the feminine. He used the femininity for this creature. Allah Jalla wa Allah says, well, the day that we were asked to help her, are you full? Is there any capacity? Where is there any limitation? The help are going to say, are there any more? The help are going to say, are there any more? Which shows that there is no limit to the help are. There is no cutoff point. Allah Jalla wa Ala and the authenticator hadith and mentioned that when he exposed his shin, he's going to step, put his, put his down on the hellfire and he's going to say, caught, caught, 
Enough, enough. The hellfire is alive. In another verse in Surah Furqan, Allah says, When it sees you, when the hellfire sees you, You think the hellfire is a joke, brothers and sisters, it's not. And we are the first people who are supposed to understand this. We should not be like the non-believers. This doesn't phase them, but this should phase us. We should believe in Allah's hellfire. Allah, Jalla wa ala, we ask Allah to protect us from the fire. We beg Allah to protect us from the fire. To protect us and to protect our children from the fire. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us paradise. Because he says, well, who's the fact to the Jannah too? And that the Jannah, which is also a lie, will be brought near. And it will be brought near for those who are mutaqeen, those who are pious, those who are actually pious. Allahumma ja'alna mina mutaqeen. We ask Allah to make us of those who have taqwa. To make us of those who have taqwa. Allah says, it would not be far for them. Hada ma tu adun. I love the eloquence of the Qur'an because it's the speech of Allah. So in the beginning of the story, you notice how Allah says those who have an insight about this, those who will really re reflect on this, is the Abdul Munir. Look how Allah says that it will be said to them, because it's a promise. This is what you have been promised for everyone who is an awab. What is an awab? That's an Abdul Munir. That's the individual who constantly return back to Allah. For every bad deed, every bad thought, you constantly begging the law to pardon you, to forgive you. Hafid, one who preserve and guard, not only his prayers, but he guard the regulations and the ordainments of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Then Allah continues, says, Man khashiya rahman abul ghaib. Each and every one of us right now have not seen Allah. We saw the signs. We know he exists through his revelation and through the prophets and messengers and through the signs. But we have not seen him. We have not seen him. So Allah Jalla wa Ali, He says, "Men khushya Rahman, those who have khushya of Ar Rahman, bil ghaib in the unseen. In this life, we didn't see him, but we was afraid of him. Allah is going to reward that. Wajaa bi kalbin munib, and he comes to Allah with a repentant heart. When he reached Allah, his heart was in a repentant state." And we ask Allah to constantly let us to be in a repentant state. The messenger is better than you and I. But he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over 70 times. And one narration over 100 times. And his past, present, and future sins was already forgiven. We can't say a stuck for the law for 10 minutes. We get mad at each other. Someone tell you a taqila. A brother want to fight you. Well, lie, man. This is true. A brother or sister will want to fight you. If you were to tell them a taqila. They're doing something they ain't supposed to be doing. And you say, hold up. It's a fight. Who are you? What? This don't come out of a believer's mouth. When someone tell you a you should feel it. You should feel the effects. I don't care if it's in Arabic. But you should know what it means. If someone tell you to fear Allah, forget everything else. You're right, brother. You're right, sister. Let me check myself. We don't do that, though. Ask Allah to make us better. But Allah don't stop there. He gives us the best part. He says, Udukhuluha bi salam. Enter this beautiful place that doesn't have an end, <coughs> which is paradise. And we ask Allah to grant us this, I mean. Enter it with peace and security. You're going to be safe. Huh? This is the day of eternal life. And then here's the best part the part. That really touch you. He says, for them, meaning the people that Allah will admit into this place, they will have everything that they desire. But you will not die and fight and hate and have a, the audacity to fall out over this dunya. This dunya is nothing. We have fight each other over this dunya. Brother got a beautiful car, you can't even be happy for his car or for him. You got rancor in your heart. Brother got a beautiful soul, the sister got a beautiful jill bath. She got something going for herself for education. You feel some type of way. 
This is not taking place in this place. Allah says you're going to have everything you desire. Even in this dunya, a person who is rich in the eyes of the people in this dunya, who have everything, he's not 100% happy. She's not 100% happy. They don't have everything they desire in this dunya because there are limitations. Not in Jannah. But then Allah gives them something better in the verse. He says, well, Adena, Mazid. This is the part that has to be breaking down. He says, and we have for you more than that. Something that is an increasement. What is better than the Jannah? Seeing Allah. So the scholars of the Tafsir, they said that the Mazid here means to glance at Allah Almighty. You go on throughout your whole life and you've never seen the law. Allah Jalla prevents the non believers and the hypocrites from seeing him. They will not see him. Allah only will allow the believers to glance at him. That's the mazi. Let's finish this up. Allah Jalla says, Allah Jalla says, how many generations we have destroyed before them who were stronger in power than them? And when our torment came, they ran for a refuge in the land. Could they find any place of refuge for them to save themselves from destruction? They couldn't. We already know that. Allah continues, He says, Inna fi dhalika la dhikra li man kana lahu qalbun al arqa sam'a wa huwa shahid. Allah Jalla wa Allah says, Indeed, therein is a reminder for him who has a heart, who gives ear while being heedful. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبٍ Allah Jalla wa'ala says, Indeed, we have created the heavens and the earth and everything in between them in six days. And nothing of fatigue ever touched us. I mean, Allah Jalla wa'ala was not tired any of that by creating the heavens and the earth in six days. Then Allah Jalla wa'ala, He consoled the Prophet Sallallahu He says, فَصْبِعْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ be patient with what they say. The Kufar in the beginning saying that this was strange for amongst your people. Saying that when we die, we will be what? We will be resurrected again? Fosbir. I'm telling you all right now. Be patient. Allah has a beautiful verse in Surah Al-Kahf. Huh? Fosbir ma'al ladhina yad'oona rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashihi yuriduna wajaha. Wa la ta'adu aynaka anhum turidu zinat al-hayat al-dunya. وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَكْثَوْنَ قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا Allah Jalla wa Ala says, and remain patient along with those who call on their Lord in the morning and in the evening. Huh? Seeking nothing but His face. They do not look at the pomp and the glitter of the life of this world. They don't let their eyes go beyond that. Huh? Nor do you obey He whose heart is heedless of our remembrance. Alright? Right? And this. He obeyed and he followed his desires and his affairs has become scattered. So here, Fasbi Allah telling him to remain patient on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa of all that they say. And subbih bi rabbi. Subbih rabbi ka qabla tulu'i shamsi wa qabla al-guru. Wa min al-layli fa subbihu wa adabar al-sujood. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and praise and glorify the praises of your Lord before the rising of the sun, before his setting. Meaning from Fajr, Zuhr, and also. And during a part of the night, also glorifies praises, meaning Maghrib and Isha and Isha. And so likewise after the prayers, meaning the Sunnah and the Wafus and the additional prayers, glorify Allah who Jalla wa Ala. ذَٰلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُرُوجِ إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي وَنُمِيتُ وَإِلَيْنَا الْمَصِيرُ يَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ الْأَرْضُ عَنْهُ سِرَاعًا ذَٰلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِجَبَّارٍ فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٍ The end of this beautiful story, Allah Jalla wa Ali says, and listen, on a day when the caller will call from a near place, we have been informed in authenticated hadith that that day will be on the day of Friday. What day will be on a Friday? 
and that everything <coughs> missing for this call except us. The animals, everything is paying attention for this call. Allah says, and listen, on the day when the caller will call from a, a near place, and listen, Yom, on the day that they will hear the shout, the cry, and truth, that will be the day of coming out of their graves, the day of resurrection. Rarely, rarely, we it is who give life and cause death, and to us is the final return. On the day that the earth shall be cleft, right, and it shall fall cleft from off them, they will come out, hastening forth. That will be the gathering, quite easy for us. We know best of what they say, and you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are not a tyrant over them to force them to believe. But warn by the Quran, him who fears my threat. Remember I said pay attention to the beginning and the end of the surah? So Allah Jalla starts off the surah with what? Call for the Quran and the Majid, the Quran. And then he ends it by saying, for that kill the Quran. Because the Prophet ﷺ is what? He's a mundim. He's a warner. But Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ, فَذَكِّلْ بِالْقُرْآنِ Warned by the Qur'an. Warned by it. Each and every one of us should know and learn the book of Allah. Even if you don't memorize it all. You should at least be familiar with what Allah says. Warned by the Qur'an. But who are you going to warn? مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيمُ The one who fears Allah's threat. What we said that was incorrect in this clip from ourselves in the shaitan. Whoever says correct, that was from Allah Jalla wa ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be of those who take heed to his words. Amen. We ask Allah Jalla wa ala to protect us from the hellfire. Amen. And to protect our family from the hellfire. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us paradise. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the highest part of paradise, paradise which is fellow dose. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us better than that, to allow us to glance at him and see him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to die upon Islam and upon the sunnah of Islam. Meaning the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to also allow us to become men and women who are representative of Islam. And even though we might fall short, that we become mirrors to one another. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to allow us to advise one another, to come to each other's houses. It's time to return back, brothers and sisters, to the Deen, the Masjid. We're looking at ways of bringing life to the Masjid. Yes, all of that is beautiful, but one of the best things you can bring life to the Masjid is Salah. We ask Allah to allow us to be of those who pray at the masjid. For those who contact people you know, call them to come pray at the masjid. That's where you'd rather die, huh? At the masjid, leaving the masjid, going to the masjid. Because you have something to argue on your behalf. The angel can say he was going to a place of good. Even though something evil might have touched him, he was going to a place of good. He was leaving from a place of good. He was in a place of good. But if, you're, uh, if the angel come to get you while you're in a place of evil, you leave in the club with the other beloved. You leave in a bar with the other beloved. You leave in a place where you ain't supposed to be at where the other beloved. Then how are you going to argue on your behalf? Whatever we say, subhanAllah, we have the kima salat, inshaAllah, ta'ala.